My name is Coach Brian Prana, and I'm here to deliver conversation about ergonomics today. A little bit about myself. I've been in the health coaching space for the last 20 years. Exercise, nutrition, fitness, all things I have shared and helped people. I typically help a lot of people that are focused on weight loss, that are focused on digestion issues, are dealing with some form of... Uh, chronic illness, you name it. I've probably talked about it in the last couple of years. So today's conversation on ergonomics is super easy and simple, and I'm really excited to bring it to you. So let's talk about what a safe work space looks like in terms of setting up your computer, your workstation, uh, stand-up desk I'm a big fan of. So let's go over some of this stuff. Now, what we've got is the first thing is what is ergonomics? We're going to talk about what that is, how to define it. We're going to talk about uh, how to make sure that your space is set up in the proper way. Uh, we're going to go over the agenda here. So what's ergonomics? How to have muscular skeletal disorders? Like what are those and how those come about? sitting, standing, and lifting, how to do that properly, and also looking at what improper form and technique look like. And then lastly, uh, setting up your workspace, and we'll wrap up today with some desk, desk stretches, things to get you actually moving and stretch. Now, suggest the, the chat box, the Q&A, the comments here. I'd love to hear what your comments are on any of this stuff. The more engaged people are, the better our conversation goes. Kicking it off, let's define what ergonomics is and what it means. So, according to Occupational Safety and Health Organization, OSHA, which you've probably heard of OSHA a bit, ergonomics is simply the study of work. It's designed to get someone who's doing a job to have the job fit around the person doing the job rather than the person fit around the the the, the job okay because when we get, think of like henry ford and the assembly line and having people bend and twist in high repetition or in awkward positions people get hurt and that becomes a big problem for the business for productivity for being able to get good services delivered on time and fashion. And it ultimately we're trying to make sure that you reduce your workers' risk of injuries of what we call MSDs, muscle skeletal disorders. Now, when there are industries that require high production rate, so like think of security or assembly lines and in manufacturing, they have to stay competitive in the marketplace and, and having a high productivity rate, high product output is going to keep them on the cutting edge to fulfilling the demands of the, the, the needs in the community or in, in the world. And if someone's day to day job is really repetitive, it could potentially lead to injury. So what are some of these Injury, injury issues that we have. People who frequently lift things, they carry things, they push or pull loads without help from other workers or even devices. Oftentimes some of these working environments might be understaffed and overpressured to deliver. Increasing specialization that requires the worker to perform only one function or movement for long periods of time. I think of even like you going to the grocery store, a cashier that is standing in one spot for a very long time, that can cause issues with someone's leg and blood circulation and such if they aren't bending and moving and being having different, uh, you know, circulating through different work positions uh, uh, that require different activities and movements. If you work more than eight hours doing any one or two particular things, even just sitting for long periods of time can challenge your body and its ability to function properly. 
having to work at a faster pace to get uh, keep up with the speed of production, the assembly line might just be moving too fast. Uh, having tighter grips when using tools. This reminds me of a client I once worked with. He had a floor service for grocery stores. He would go in after hours and clean and buff the floors with a, like a waxy spinning machine. Right? And he would hold on to the spinning machine for hours. Now doing it for like one job or two job, but for doing it days, weeks, months, years, he developed a lot of chronic tendonitis in his elbows, forearms, where there'd be even numbness because of constantly having to hold on and steer the machine and do it in a way that was really fatiguing to his muscles, to his ligaments, to his tendons. And he needed to then go for massages. He had to do other therapies to help work through that so that it would loosen up his, his, his forms and he wouldn't have numbness happening. So let's define what muscle skeletal diseases are. Uh, MSDs are injuries to the ligaments, tendons, joints, cartilage, muscle tendons, the, the disorders that happen in soft tissues, even the nervous system. I mean, it'll, it'll affect all areas of your body. I think of if you work at a computer, you might be at risk for more carpal tunnel because of the constant typing and the friction created in the, the wrist area of the, the carpal. And, and what we have happening here is your fingers flex and there are tendons that run through this sheath at your wrist and there increases friction and there's inflammation and there's soreness and pain even. I actually at one point had two clients that had gotten the surgery, the carpal tunnel surgery, basically at the same time. I actually paired them up to talk to each other about their experience and how they're finding some relief. Because it, it, yes, it, it helped, but it also didn't help. They had months afterwards of less uh, ability to uh, you know, grip, strength was down, flexibility was down. Doing even gardening would affect the forearms and cause them to not be able to function as well either. So that, it can be a really serious thing that costs a lot of time, energy, and money. And we're going to talk about that. So what are some of the risk factors? Of course, there's like just force, like the, the having to push something, pull something, have impact, a lot of repetition, being in awkward positions. Can you imagine having to sit in a slouch position for hours on end? Well, chances are you might have done it. Uh, I remember back in school, I would be in the most slouched, awkward positions I could find myself in, never just sitting full upright in, in the seat because I was, didn't want to, I just, you just you get tired of sitting upright. I, in my current working situation, there's not a lot of sitting at all. I usually walk and stand and pace. And even right now I'm standing up. I've got a, a desk, I've got a table and then I've got a stool and then my computer's on top of the stool. And that, for me works really well because I can stand. I have two chairs on each side of the table so I can shift my leg position and, and rock and bend and move so I can stay more relaxed. So static positions, think of that grocery shopping uh, checkout person. I, I just standing in that one position on repeat for hours and hours. Uh, doing any type of quick motion, sudden movements can cause more risk compression or contact stress. If something's squeezing or touching you, then there can be some irritation happening through even vibration. It would be a common one. Or even cold temperatures. Uh, the, my, my pool outside, I had to go and get my little leaf sucker vacuum going. And I had to stick my hands in water, it's freezing. If I had to do that a lot, my hands would not like that over time. And I could have increased risk of, of injury to my hand because my everything is just like super cold and they're not, it's tendons and muscles don't function well when you have a lot of cold 
to them. Now, what are some of the common mus musculoskeletal disorders that we have? The MSDs. We've got rotator cuff injuries. And so through doing uh, repetitive movement, whether you're playing like tennis or something, but more importantly, moving your arm left and right, so you can create in, in, a, in a solid position, you can create tightness in your rotator cuff and cause pain to shoot down your arm and not be able to lift it, like not be able to take your shirt off. That's, that's a problem. There's trigger finger where your finger just is kind of stuck in a crooked position. You can't squeeze it. It doesn't straighten out as well. Uh, we've got muscle strains. Of course, you know what those are. We've got low back injuries, just constantly aching and like, ah, oh, my back hurts and just in pain. Carpal tunnel, as I, I discussed, we have tendinitis, sciatic, sciatic nerve pain. That's where there's a tightening of or some form of a pinch happening with your sciatic nerve. And sciatica will go run down your legs and cause numbness or pain or lack of being able to move. Herniated discs are an obvious big issue as well. What are some of the impacts of what happens to you or even the industry when MSDs come about? Well, it, it can last up to eight days of workman comp compared to just six days of just illness, like getting a cold. So you literally are out longer. When I went to my, my, when I grew up, my house was near an industrial industry road, meaning there's a lot of like warehouse type places. Rubbermaid was there. I think it was even Rubbermaid that I'm referencing, but I'd be, my mom would drive by and on the sign would be this many days since our last injury. Like they were literally documenting it because they wanted potential workers to see that it was a safe place to work at and that they weren't going to get hurt just going for a job there. So it can cost up to the, the, the world like 54 billion in lost wages, compensation, lost productivity. That's significant when people aren't able to work and there's just a, literally a slowdown in the process. So even just for me, if I got sick or I got hurt, I say like my voice, I got laryngitis. Now I talk to people on the phone all the time. There'd be a, a loss of my wages that I wouldn't be able to do the work that I do because I couldn't speak. That would be very problematic. Now, on average, it takes uh, workers 25 days to recover from carpal tunnel syndrome. And as I said, with those two people, even six months are still having potential risk of issues or challenges that came up because of the surgery and their body just not being back to 100% normal. There's severe injuries. It can be permanent disability. There's businesses that take out insurance to help mitigate short-term or even long-term disabilities because of the type of work that they do. Now we have benefits of ergonomics. Obviously, we're going to decrease the risk of injury and increase your productivity and decrease mistakes and problems and errors and increase your efficiency in work and decrease lost work days and decrease turnover and improve morale. These are all things that happen when you are just more productive, you are in better positioning, whether just sitting at your desk or standing or doing other types of laborious jobs. Now, sitting, standing, and lifting. So how do we do these properly in a way that allows you to keep doing them. Most people that I talk to sit for a living and do desk work, and it's really important that they're set up properly to ensure that they are ergonomically safe. So if we look at these two images, if you're listening to the audio, there is one person on the left that's sitting upright and they are alert, attentive, the everything seems to be in, uh, ergonomically correct. The other one, there's someone slouched, their feet and knees and elbows are in awkward positions, their neck is bent and crooked. 
so this is a, a, a very a very stark difference from one to another some Researchers found that we'll spend 10 hours a day sitting. So if you think about a typical day for a human, they wake up from a lying position. They get up, they amble around their house, they get in a car to drive to the work, to sit for eight hours, to drive home, to if they're not an active person and not going out for an evening walk or activity, they might find themselves in the couch in a seated position yet again, only to return back to bed in a flat lying position, just literally not move that much. Our bodies were not made to do that. Our bodies are made to move and our bodies are made to make sure that you are able to uh, keep activity going, keep your, your movement happening. Our, we literally, with more movement, we end up having better endorphins released and more energy given throughout the body. Now, when we talk about sitting properly, we have hands, wrists, and forearms need to be straight in line and roughly parallel to the floor, All right? So we want our arms to be flat out. Now, if I were to do my stand-up desk here in the proper ergonomics, the the screen is at a good height, but the actual keyboard would need to be about what is that? It's about eight inches lower. So I could get away with this. My arms are up more and my arms are more straight out, which is this could be fine. If I was typing like this all day, I could see there'd be fatigue. There's a lot of say tension in my shoulder here from my arm just resting there. Whereas if I had it down at my side, there's no tension in my joint at the shoulder, my, my humerus, the, the bone of your arm, your bicep, tricep bar, that'd be pointing straight down. Your head needs to be in a level position, needs to be upright. They always talk about this like a bowling ball. If your head is forward, even an inch, it, it feels like there's a bowling ball up there. Now all of a sudden we have all this tension on our neck or on our shoulders and a trap, and even having that type of a head position allows more tension, more pain, more discomfort to come. And so if you want to have our, our head upright and tall, and even sometimes like in the physical therapy world, you would do some chin tucks. You just pull your chin backwards toward your body and moving your head backwards. And that allows you to kind of reset your neck and positions going there. Shoulders are relaxed and upper body uh, and arms hang normally at the sides. So we don't want tension. We don't want shoulders shrugged or squeezed. That creates tension. That creates problems. We want to relax. We want elbows to be close to the body, bent in about 90 degrees to 120, possibly. Uh, we don't want like T-Rex arms trying to work or arms having to be straight out trying, trying to work. That's not going to work there. We have our feet are fully supported by the floor or having a footrest if your feet don't quite reach the floor. If you're not too tall for the ride, and then you need to have a footrest there as well. That's just part of being ergonomically correct. So if your chair doesn't adjust, but then if the chair adjusts, but you your desk is too tall uh, we see where we might need to make several adjustments here to get the the arms in line your forearms in line with the desk resting comfortably on top of the desk and then your seat might need to be lifted if you're on the not so tall side of of being a human back is supported appropriate lumbar support I'm a big fan of lumbar support. I like it. I oftentimes am either sitting in a nice, firm, upright like wooden chair, or I am sitting with something with a lumbar support. I prefer it. It makes me feel way better sitting at when I do actually sit. Okay. There could be a slight lean back as well, but we don't want to be reclined because then you have to, you're not going to be in an ergonomic situation. You're not going to be upright and tall. Thighs, hips are supported with a well-padded seat and generally parallel to the floor. And the knees 
need to be the same height as the hips. So they should be right in line with each other. And generally these could be uh, right, your, your feet right over your, your knees or feet slightly forward. And that would be fine too. So if we look at, uh, again, another picture on the screen, we have someone with a slouch back, rounding forward, elbows drop below the desk level, and their feet or heels are off the ground because they're not seated properly, the chair might not be at the proper height. That's gonna cause a lot of back pain and neck shoulder pain pretty quick. Whereas the other picture, someone's upright and tall and doing it really nicely. We have other seated postures. So declined seated sitting. Thighs are inclined with your, your glutes, your butt, higher than the knees. The angle between your thighs and your torso are greater than 90 degrees. So if this is, think of something like a, a tall chair uh, and, and having that type of situation where you're kind of able to sit upright and your arm, your legs are a little bit longer and the, the knees a little less. The torso is vertical or slightly reclined and the legs are vertical. So it'd be more like sitting and relaxing back there. The torso and neck are straight and reclined between 105 and 120 degrees from the thighs. That's important as well. So if you're sitting back and reclined like a recliner, then we, again, most importantly, neck, back, waist, they're all gonna be tall and upright. So if proper standing position. So for standing, we wanna be straight up and tall. Think of if someone tied a rope to the top of your head and then they pulled you upright, right? Do you see that? I just went up even an extra, an extra two inches, okay? even an inch. And, and this is a, a much more confident, much more stronger position. Your shoulders are tilted back, your head's upright, it's stacked over your shoulders, over your bodies. Everything can be supported by bone and proper structure, not having to actually hold upright. Again, if my head is in a slightly lean forward position, I have to engage neck muscles to keep it in that position. Whereas if it's up bouncing over my neck bones, of my spine there, my uh, cervical spine, then it makes it a lot easier. Even the shape of our spines are built in a way to support itself and not have to work too hard in a standing position. A footrest may be needed to stand, so that's what I have, I have two of them. I have two chairs that I can put my legs up on and I can shuffle side to side either way. That allows for just a little bit of different movement, or I can stretch, or I can bend, or put my body in a different position. Now we have prolonged standing. If you're standing for a very long time, fatigue will get put into place. You need to pay attention to that and either have stretching breaks, walking breaks, movement breaks, sitting down breaks that get built into your day so you're not just literally standing. Because blood flow might actually decrease and the length of time that you're standing can actually cause more pain and fatigue. And there's other things like you know, varicose veins could develop as a result of standing so much. So you alternate your time between standing and sitting, slowly increasing the amount of time you stand up to four hours or half a day for your work. If you're not used to standing or a stand-up desk, well, number one, I highly recommend a stand-up desk if you work at a desk position in the first place. You just literally move more, you have more energy, and all of this movement I've been doing this whole time is burning calories. It's called NEAT, non-exercise activity thermogenesis. This stuff matters in the bigger picture of burning calories and getting your body to, to uh, even just maintain weight better. People who move more and fidget more generally have easier times being able to manage their body weight and it just because they burn more calories. So if you aren't, if, if you want to get to a standard desk position, but you've been sitting, do it in small incremental amounts of time and build up over a course of like two, possibly three weeks of spending more hours standing than sitting. Uh, if I worked in an office, I would insist 
on a stand-up desk. I just would not, not, not be able to do a seated desk. It just wouldn't work. I would go crazy. So standing properly, desk height, set the heights of your desk so you can keep your keyboard with your arms resting comfortably at your side. So again, my keyboard here and my laptop's too high. Uh, I would need an, a, a laptop station, so I have one, that puts my computer at an angle at the keyboard and it props up the incline of the screen up a little bit higher and for where I'm at purposely right now I'd have to drop it at least three to four inches down and then that work out that setup would actually work pretty well and keep my head in a neutral position and keep my arms in a more natural shoulders hanging position I don't have to flex or hold my arm up to type or put a lot of pressure so like if even right now I have my arm elevated and there's a lot of pressure on my wrist to, to maintain I'm keeping my arm up. That's at contact risk of force that could cause issues. And the more pressure on my wrist and the more I tight, the more compression happens in my carpal area, which then could lead to carpal tunnel, for example. So the monitor should be raised up to eye level so you're not tilting your head or neck down or up. It should just, again, neutral head and put a slight tilt of like 10 to 20 degrees in the monitor screen itself that's allow proper for glare and whatnot and keep a safe distance so you want to be no less than a distance from your middle finger to your elbow away from your computer so i mean your computer should be like right there to be able to reach it then lastly lighting so we can have lighting in uh, around you we have lighting from the screen so we want to make sure that we watch for glare on the screen we want to watch for blue light uh, and shining at you uh, for my my phone i use my phone quite a bit i recently up, updated to the, the iphone 16 now but I, I have that thing pretty tuned in for the for, for the brightness i put it in dark mode i have reducing the white point feature that tones down the white point and it really darkens the back lit of the screen especially when it's dark outside that's super helpful so that it's not shining sometimes i feel like the brightness is just like beating into my eyeballs and it's just like that's not fun that's not ideal so that's for standing now lifting properly we want to make sure that we're always using your heels we're using our legs our glutes our butt not our back. Our back should be in a straight line. We have two images on the screen, one with a rounded back, straighter legs, and bending over to pick something up. The other one, someone squatting, they have a straight back, their head's in a neutral position, and they're able to bring the weight up, and it places significantly less stress and strain on their body. You want to keep our feet wide, like in a squatting position, or if you just like stand your feet at a shoulder width spot or I mean, just stepping the feet side to side that'll get you into that position and then you squat down weight goes on your heels your butt goes back the object should be between your legs or close to the body the farther out the object is say it's a box the harder it's going to be to pick up the more challenging it's going to be to pick up so we want to minimize that as much as we can. We're slowly straightening our legs. We really, again, want to focus on lifting with your hips, your thighs, not your knees or your low back. Oftentimes people say, oh, my knees hurt. Well, that's because their form is pretty bad when they lift up. They put a lot of strain into their knee and kneecap based on the way they're lifting and it, and it hurts. So you always want to keep that, that the, your body in you know, the best biomechanics that you can. Now, setting up your workspace. How do we do that so that you can go to work and enjoy the environment that your desk and computer are in? Or even think about, you know, if it's not a computer, you got to really think about what are what's the optimal ergonomics for your working 
situation. Now, most of the people ever on these are going to be in a desk type situation. So the desk surface should be uh, allow you to place your monitor directly in front of you about 20 inches away. So for me, mine's about two feet away. It's, it's, when I put my arms up, it's pretty comfortable to type and I feel like there's a proper distance. I can turn down my screen brightness and, or up and it, it, it works pretty well for me that way. This, we need to be able to accommodate a variety of working positions and postures. So having a stand desk can move up and down. That would be great. Use a wrist rest to mean straight wrist posture or minimize contact of stress during typing so that you don't have that compression and that tension and uh, the reduction of range of <coughs> excuse me either motion or friction when you bend your fingers your keyboard should be in front of you shoulders should be relaxed elbows close to the side wrist straight in line with your forearms just like we've been going over your chair the backrest should have a neutral curvature to the spine some lumbar support for sure your seat should be comfortable, breathable, it allows your feet to sit flat on the ground, or if you need a footrest, definitely have one so that your feet are in an elevated spot. Your armrest, if provided, should be soft, cushiony, squishy, for sure. It's definitely good to have an armrest, but again, note that if you're spending a lot of time on your armrest and you're, you're leaning in or something and you're bending or typing, you might have some elbow discomfort at some point here as well. The chair should have a five leg base with casters that allow easy movement along the floor. Uh, we wanna put your monitor directly in front of you and keep your eyes in line with the screen slightly down and about 20 inches away. Now, if you're working at home back in COVID, I remember working with a lot of people that were slouched on a comfy couch and just working in weird positions. And although that sounds fun, but if that's your actual working position, eh, that caused problems. So we'd still wanna go and insist on doing a proper ergonomics. If you were working from a laptop, for less than an hour, then sure, you can keep your laptop on your thighs and on your, your lap and type. But if you are going to be on it for a longer time, you might want to attach an external keyboard and use your laptop as a monitor, per se. Uh, a mouse would be ideal and so maybe a tracking pad. For, for me, I have a trackpad on my MacBook Air that works, uh, but I also might even enjoy doing a mouse but if you use a mouse maybe you'd want to be a ambidextrous mouse user meaning you use it with your right arm or your left arm and you had those abilities to do that and you didn't always just use your right arm because again highly repetitive movements over a long times causes breakdown so looking at this workspace here on the image we have a couple different screens popping up to allow for easy uh, imaging allow for ease in the ability to see what you're seeing. We've got the chairs in a proper height, the knee, the feet are on the ground, the elbows are in line with the wrists that are right in line with the top of the desk and the back is straight. So that's what we're looking for here. As far as desk stretches, we're gonna wrap up with stretching here. We want to improve the and lower your risk of MSDs and keep your energy going. A tight muscle is not an energetic one. A tight body is not an energetic one. So we do want to make sure that we are going to go to keep that body loosey-goosey, as I'd say, and keep you from feeling overly tight. Wrist stretch number one, let's go through it. So we're going to do a wrist stretch. You're gonna stick your arms straight out. If you're listening in, you stick your arms straight out, fingers up. You're gonna take your other hand, so I'm, I'm stretching my right wrist. So fingers are arms straight, fingers are straight up. I'm gonna take my left hand, pull my wrist, my fingers, and stretch out my wrist. Tank out. You wanna make sure you're breathing too. Breathing, one, two, three. And we will switch sides. Let's go to the other side and stretch. And now we're going to go.
Go back to the first hand, the right hand. We're going to point the fingers down with the arm and out. The elbow goes up in a more straight position. I'm going to grab on and stretch. And then we'll go to the other side. So fingers down, arm straight, elbow pointing up. Or your arm should be as straight as you can. You're going to feel a really good stretch there. And then the last one is you're going to take your right hand again. We're going to palm facing you, fingers pointing down. You're going to grab or stretch in the top of the wrist. This one doesn't bend nearly as nice as the other one. This is a flexion stretch. The other one is an extension stretch. So we're doing it on the other side, stretching. Lastly, if you want, you can put your, if you stand up and you put your hands on the desk, you're going to have your fingers point toward you and then push down with straight arms. Last one to get a really good stretch through your forms. All right, great, 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 great. Let's move on. What's the next one? We have a seated twist. Obviously, this is a great one. So I'm going to do it standing, but obviously you are seated. So what we're going to do is first and foremost, take a deep breath in. As we're breathing in, we're lifting our spine as tall as we can. We're going to rotate our shoulders evenly with each other and twist pulling on the back of the chair, placing an arm on a thigh to help stretch, just nice, gently. And we're gonna go to the other side. Gotta get you moving today. Excellent. All right, so the chest. So what we're going to do in a seated chest position, you're going to sit really tall. You're going to edge up onto the front of your seat. You're going to grab the bottom part of the backrest, and we're going to lift our shoulders up, 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 stretching through the chest and the shoulders, breathing in, and exhale, and breathing in, and exhale. Good, 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 good. Low back, this one's easy. The extension is where it's at. This is a flexion movement. This is rounding of the back, which feels really good, but any physical therapist is always gonna put you in an extension as well. So we're going to sit tall. We're gonna slowly drop our chest to our thighs. Right, and then slowly come right back up. Good, good, good. That one always feels really good. Now, when you're down there, too, you can kind of rock your shoulder toward one side and then rock your shoulder to the other to help stretch through the waistline a little bit more or the side or one side of the back as we go. Now, the next one, we're going to stand up. You're going to stand up. We're going to place our foot on the chair with the leg straight. We're going to Get real tall on our backs, stand tall, deep breath in, and slowly bend at the hip, not at your low back. Bend the hip, we're gonna reach forward, stretch, 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 stretch. And slowly come up, I like that one a lot. And then we'll go to the other side, tall back, leaning forward. Good. So you should feel a lot more loose and relaxed when your hamstrings. Piriformis stretch. So we're going to send our seated. We're going to have our right ankle across our top of our left knee. We're going to get tall and so back straight and slowly lean forward, shifting your shoulders forward over toward your knees. Stretch, stretch. Breathing. And then back up, and we'll go to the other side. Taking a deep breath in and leaning forward, stretching. All 
Oh, yeah, that that feels... My left side's always way more tighter than my right. Usually you might feel something similar. One side of your body is more of a, what we call a mobility side, and the other side is a stability side. So think if you're going to go kick a ball. You're generally going to kick a ball with one foot. So I'm right-handed. I kick the ball with my right. I plant my left foot. My left leg is stronger and more flexible. Uh, excuse me. My, my right leg is more flexible, but my left leg is more stronger because for, um, for four decades, I've been planting my foot and swinging my right leg through. So my right leg has more range of motion, whereas my left leg doesn't. We're human, so we're looking for cross balance. So when I step forward with my left foot, my right arm and shoulder move forward to keep my body in balance. It's just basic biomechanics. All right, lateral stretches is one of my favorites. It really opens up the side. So we're going to be seated tall as we can, arms straight up, straight up. Deep breath in. And we're going to exhale one side. Leaning, leaning, leaning. And then deep breath in, up, 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 up. And then exhale to the other side. And up, and relax. All right, so there we go. We're all stretched out, we're loose, we're flexible, we're pliable. I hope you feel really good today. If you have any comments or questions, put them into the comment below. I really appreciate your time today. I hope you feel more refreshed, more loose, more energized, more blood flow. And we see that your ergonomics are way better than they were before. So thank you so much.